Since entering the music scene as half of the hit neo-soul duo Flowetry, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Marsha Ambrosius has worked with some of music's biggest names, including Michael Jackson, Dr. Dre, Solange, and Kendrick Lamar. In 2011, Marsha released her first solo album, which peaked at number one on the Billboard R&B charts. And today, she joins us to discuss the upcoming release of her highly anticipated third album, Nyla. Everyone, please welcome Marsha Ambrosius. Hi. Do the wave, do the clean wave. Yes, yes, yes. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hi. Wine, I like nice it. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Happy Friday, people. Happy Friday. Okay. Oh, I love the bulls. Look at that shirt. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Go do it. Welcome. So first of all, we're so excited Thank to you. have you here. And I know you're going to sing for us later, but we have a ton of questions for you. Yes. Fire away. Starting with the new album. Yes. It's Nyla. Does it stand for NYLA? What, what's the meaning NYLA. behind that? NYLA. Yes, it yeah. stands for NYLA. It's also my daughter's name. Aww. Yeah. And she was actually named after her dad, which was... He was born in L.A. but raised in Buffalo, New York. So oh. N.Y.L.A. Nyla. I thought you were going to say you named her for the album. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, that, that could have been a thing. Right. But um, I, I guess it's the journey that it took to get to her. Mm. Because coming from the U.K., originally born in Liverpool, England, mm. raised yeah. in South London. Yeah, Scouser. I'm like Paul McCartney. The fifth. <laughs> I'm the fifth Beatle. Yeah. And then uh, my journey over the past, what, almost two decades now has been coming to New York. Mm -hmm. having a couple of meetings, flying to LA in the red eye back. And wow. then I've toured the United States over the course of that time. So I was really busy on, you know, concentrating on my career. And then I fell in love, Aww. finally. Yeah. Oh, and we got Nyla. Got Beautiful more name. Than, yeah. More than Nyla. Yeah. Yeah, got a bit more than Nyla. But yeah, all roads led to Nyla. So tell us a little bit about the album. How long have you been working on it? And what can we kind of expect vibe-wise? Because we know you for the R&B, Neo Soul. Is it right. more of that? It's, uh, it's an extension of what um, people who have known my prior work, I've been writing and producing for a long time. It's uh, everything that I did with, you know, Michael Jackson butterflies through and through to all the flowetry stuff. And then you fast forward 20 years and I'm still continuing to build on me. So I'd been recording this album over the course of maybe a year, a year and a half. Which sounds like a long time, but for me, I've been touring off of my first solo album for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, even wow. with the old flowetry stuff, I could sing a song that I wrote 24 years ago, which is Butterflies. Butterflies yeah. is 24 years old. A 24-year-old. Wow. <laughs> That's what I get That's to me. Sing. That's me. Right, yeah. so That's my us. song is you. We're Butterflies. We're just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's crazy to, to create in that way and do it now, coming from a place of now being in love and mm -hmm. being a wife and being a mother. So, sonically, it's just honest. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I could tell you to expect other than just straight honesty and self-discovery and completely submitting and surrendering to wanting to be loved and be in love now. Wow, that's beautiful. So, yeah. Going off of honesty, as a songwriter, how different is it writing for yourself? Is there more freedom? Like, can you get a lot deeper than, let's say, writing for someone like Michael Jackson? Like, that experience must be, I mean, the pressures must be so different because you're writing for a pop icon. Well, the king of pop. <laughs> yeah. King. <laughs> the king, yeah. Right. Um, Butterflies, I actually wrote when I was about 16 or 17 years oh, old. Wow. And I, uh, I'm telling on myself, that's my age. <laughs> Fast forward to that. But I wrote it about a boy that worked in McDonald's. And he swept the floor. He didn't even flip a burger. He didn't have that wow. type of emotion. He was sweeping the floor. And I used to stand outside the window at the bus stop that I didn't need to be at because I lived up the street. <laughs> and I would just stare at him and, oh, my God, I have butterflies for you. <gasps> so I didn't write it I with the that. intent for yeah. the king of pop. So right. fast forward to me being 21, 22, I'm then creating a demo, which then turned into Flo Retreat's demo to get us a deal. And... Off of that demo, Michael Jackson heard it through John McClane and says that, oh, I love that song. I want that song. Sure, Michael, why not? <laughs> yeah. I know oh, Let me just think it. about uh, this. Michael no, Jackson wants my so song. you really like that guy. He worked in my job. <laughs> <laughs> no shame, <laughs> yeah. but you can have it. Yeah. And as far as writing for myself, 
I always write from a personal place. Mm -hmm. It's whoever connects to it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I do get selfish and be like, no, I want to keep this one. And yeah, so, you yeah. know, the king of pop says they want it. Yeah. Yeah. That's you so know. funny. My first kiss was a British boy who worked at McDonald's. What? Really? Yeah. There's something about British boys and McDonald's. Shout out <laughs> to you. Yeah. If he was a McDonald's. They always smell like French fries. Yeah. 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 He smelled really good. It might really be good. that. Yeah. It might be that. Right I'll take that. But yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoy writing and coming from that personal space and, you know, whoever I end up working with because of that is just a privilege. Mm -hmm. A song like Butterflies, though, that you then give to Michael, like, is a part of you sad to let it go in that way? It's Michael. Michael. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so sad, no, yeah. for it to take on a life of its own and for people to connect just with the emotion of the song and the intent. I can listen to it and smile and right. be like, yeah. Oh, the Camberwell, SE5, London, good old McDonald's. Yeah. And someone else is like, oh, I fell in love to mm -hmm. that song. I remember hearing it on the radio for the first time. So it, it takes on a life of its own. So sad, never. Okay. The boy will understand. Yeah. yeah. McDonald's boy yeah. will understand. Yeah. And so will, you know, everyone that <laughs> loves the Michael Jackson record. So. Yeah. And what was, uh, what was your experience uh, like going solo? Because you were a part of Flow Tree right. and, and, you know, then really working on your own voice and your, for yourself. Well, I'd always been a solo artist. I was initially a solo artist prior to being in a group. Yeah. I did the group thing because I was bored. Mm -hmm. You know, industry-wise, <laughs> when you're 17, 18 years old and it's like, you want to be just one thing. And at that time in my career, it was, what, 90, between 95 and 98. So think about the musical yeah. time. Right. I mean, you're too young to know. But that was a time of Biggie, Ready to Die, and then Life After Death comes out, and it's Faith Evans, it's Mary J. Blige, it's Toll, it's that whole bad boy era. Yeah. So I was there with the, you know, the short Halle Berry cut, <laughs> finger waves on one side, and tomboy look. Rapping and singing. Mm -hmm. I had a solo song called Is This Real? Mm. So you can Google it. It's, it exists. And I'm rapping <laughs> and singing. I actually posted it on Instagram. Everyone was like, oh my God, this sounds like a bop. Or whatever the kids are saying. Right. It's a bop. That's right. That's so, right. So yeah, it's a bop. And I think I was just searching for something that I wanted to do. So getting into the group, it was to create another narrative. It was another layer to, you know, deepness. Yeah. When you're that young, you think you've experienced life. Now I know I knew nothing. <laughs> but back then it was, I'm depressed because I tore ligaments. Right. Oh. I was a basketball player first. Oh. So, oh. well, not first. I can say that my dad was a basketball player and coach and a musician. So I'm like, I want to be like my dad. Mm -hmm. But when I tore ligaments, I wrote a poem called If I Was a Bird. And that turned into a song that was on the first Flow Tree album. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it not over heartache, but heartache that I couldn't play basketball oh. anymore. <laughs> which is crazy. So it's a, I'm just a, a solo artist that has people grow with me from the very beginning. Yeah. So they've seen me as that little basketball player, tomboy girl that's rapping and singing mm -hmm. and now doing a deep flow tree moment. And then I embark upon this sexual energy journey as a woman in America trying to navigate and find self-discovery. Yeah. And then that's late nights and early mornings. And now friends and lovers and now... Nyla. So mm -hmm. it's one continuous, you know, cohesive story, which now getting to share this new album, you feel like, oh, I know her. Mm -hmm. right. You evolution. don't. Well, you do, kind yeah. of, because I, let, I tell too much of my business, but it's very <laughs> personal, you know, just pressing play on an album like, oh, I really went through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many songs I probably won't be able to sing live because they're just too sad. Right. Oh. Well, speaking of singing live, you mentioned it before <laughs> with Nyla and touring across the country and, and over your whole career, I'm assuming that touring live, live performance is an extra way to connect with an audience that you get right. to see in person. You have a performance tonight, right? I do. Can you talk about that a little bit? So, um, well, well, for you here today. My well, today. here today, then also you today. I'm doing tomorrow, New Jersey. actually, yeah. New Jersey at the NJ oh, Pack okay. with yeah. Kim. So I'm opening for him. And it's a, a venue I've played many, many times. And uh, it's a way to... It's almost like I'm a stand-up comedian slash musician. Because yeah. I have to sing the song and then I have to explain why I wrote it. Right. Like every time I perform a song that I wrote, oh, it's so terrible. Um, Hope she cheats on you with a basketball player. 
That's the title, <laughs> the full title. We They wanted to cut it down to hope she cheats. And I was like, no, we need yeah. to be specific here. <laughs> yeah. I hope she cheats on you with a basketball player. <laughs> That's just way worse. Uh -huh. So getting to connect with an audience that connects with a song like that, mm -hmm. not only that, but with Say Yes or Getting Late or Butterflies or anything that you truly connect with is just a joy to see who kind of responds in a way that, you know, you feel like I wrote it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the live element is really, really, truly special. Well, lucky for us, we're going to get to experience the live element in just a little bit. You're going to sing for us. I am. First, I want to thank you, though, for joining us today. Oh, thank, you thank you so much. So much. Thank, you. thank you. And like I said, we're not done yet. Up next is a special live performance from Marsha Ambrosius. You won't want to miss it. Come back. <laughs> 